So we have a new player in town. Who is it? Well, Ugreen. They've decided to enter the NAS market. Most of us know Ugreen for their cabling and charging products, but now we're going to take a look at their Kickstarter NAS. I have the DXP4800 Plus in my possession. I want to thank Ugreen for sending this out to me for my testing and review. However, all of the comments and opinions you'll be hearing are that of my own. I'll be rating the DXP4800 Plus on a scale of 1 to 5 in the following four areas. Presentation, price, hardware, and software. So when the delivery arrived and I opened it up, I was highly impressed by the packaging. That was the first initial impression of the Ugreen NAS. You can also see by their website, they definitely have put in the time and effort and from a presentation standpoint, they really have done a fine job. So it's obvious Ugreen put a lot of thought, effort, and planning into their packaging and presentation of the NAS Sync series. For that reason, and also because it reminds me of a certain computer company that we all know, I have to give it a 5 for presentation. All right, now we get to the important part. Well, at least for some. We're looking at the price point. According to this page here, third column over, the DXP4800 Plus is $419, and that's the 40% off Kickstarter price. Regular recommended retail is going to be $699.99. Now, in comparison to proven NAS brands already on the market, I'm really not sure Ugreen has thought this through. In my opinion, for a product that has yet to prove itself, I really think they have to revisit the pricing. For that reason, I have to give it a three. All right, so let's stick with this page just a little bit longer, taking a look at the specs of the DXP4800 Plus, the operating system is the UGOS Pro, and we'll talk about that a little later in this video. The CPU model is the 8505 Intel x86. It's a 12th generation Intel Pentium Gold, 5 cores, 6 threads. It comes with 8 gig of DDR5 RAM, expandable up to 64 gig. It has SSD storage up to 128 gig. It has 4 SATA drive bays and two M.2 SSD drive slots, and we're gonna take a look at the rest of the features, physical features of the hardware, next. Taking a closer look at the hardware on the front of the box, you have your one, two, three, four drive bay slots, your power button, some status lights, SD card slot, USB-C, and a USB 3.2 port. On the rear of the unit, you have a direct HDMI out, followed by a USB 3.2 slot, followed by two USB 2.0 slots, a 2.5 gig ethernet, a 10 gig ethernet port, a reset button, and the power port. And again, a lot of thought went into this device. If you look, you could see we have a removable Ugreen cover that covers the fan, one large fan on the back. It just slips and snaps right in place. Again, very well thought out. And finally, I just want to show you the bottom of the unit. I removed the door panel. Inside, you can see the memory slots. There's an 8 gig DDR5 in there now. There's an extra slot, again, expandable up to 64 gig. And then over to the side of that are your two M.2 SSD drive slots. So I have to say, the DXP4800 Plus is really well built. This device is solid. It's got some serious weight to it. It's got a great form factor. Again, you could see a lot of thought, a lot of effort went into producing this hardware. I have to give it to you, you Green. You nailed it on the hardware, and for that, I have to give you a five. Get started by inserting the drives, connecting an ethernet cable, connecting the power cable, and then turning on the unit. Then open a browser and go to find.ugnas.com. Go ahead and click connect and follow the on-screen setup wizard. This wizard walks you through every step of the process and even sets up your volume and storage pool. Okay, I'd like to take you on just a quick tour of the Ugreen OS. Again, it's in its infancy, but it's very clean. It's very simplistic at this point, at the time of this recording. I'm sure things are going to change, hopefully pretty steadily. Looking over in the upper right-hand corner, you have your user account information, search, your notification center, task center, 
and then you have your RAM and CPU usage wizard. So there you go. Over here in the upper left hand corner, just have your basic layout for apps. And then on your desktop, you have the file manager, task manager. Under file manager, you could see I did create a test folder. It was very simple to do, very intuitive. Under control panel, you have all your basic uh, utilities. Under user management, I was able to create a uh, test user, apply a user to a group, and set the permissions. That was pretty straightforward. I enabled SMB. We'll talk about that in a second. Under the storage manager, you can see the status for the storage is normal. This is your volume and pool information. Then under the app center, this is where you would install additional apps. And now you can see that it only has 15 of them. They're categorized under utility, system management, and right now media and entertainment. So there's not much. Again, it's in its infancy. I hope you Green plans to uh, extend and build upon this. But uh, again, very clean and very simple. Um, by the way, I do want to note that after I ran, I did run an update, and after I did install the um, OS update, it did jump from the original OS that I had when I first booted up had seven apps on it. So it more than doubled. Now we are up to 15. Here we have a log center of all the events that have taken place since the initial boot up. Here's a support tab, which is built right in, which is very nice. And then you have your universal search. So at this point, I'd like to talk a little bit about my thoughts on this unit. A lot of people, I've seen a lot of videos, I've seen a lot of reviews, I've read a lot of the comments in those videos, and I have to tell you, I think the creators have done a great job. I will say some of the comments on their videos have been positive, some not so positive. You know, people, um, the real power users are out there saying it can't do this and it can't do that and it can't do this. But, you know, you got to realize what device you're talking about here. It's in its infancy. It's in a Kickstarter program that basically just started selling on March 26th of 2024. So overall... Um, I think it's a pretty good design. The hardware is outstanding. I do have some notes on the screen, so I do want to refer over to them so I don't leave any of my uh, thoughts out. I think the software interface is clean, simple. It is really snappy. It responds very well. The NAS itself, it's super quiet. Although while I was installing the operating system update, it got a little louder, but that's only because the CPU is peaking at around 97 or 98%. Otherwise, it is really pretty quiet. Navigating around the UI, as I showed you, is super intuitive. In its current state, I think this is the perfect device as an introduction to network attached storage to a first-time NAS owner. It has the basic features of a NAS, file storage, and backup. For those familiar with other more popular brands on the market that have been around for a while who are looking for like more robust set of features and applications, this probably isn't going to be the NAS for you. However, but for the home user, small, small business owner and photographer, I think this would be a good starting point, especially if the software evolves over time. Again, and that said, I'd like to see the software and the App Center steadily mature. But again, remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. The NAS Sync series is in its infancy. A baby has to crawl right before it can walk. So for everybody out there, uh, viewers that have been you know, critiquing this device pretty hard, um, I would say give it a chance because it, it has a lot of promising things, especially the hardware. The hardware is fantastic, and I got to give that to you, Green, as far as that's concerned. Now, a few things to note, and I, and I haven't really uh, dove deeply into this, but the, I will say the user group setup was pretty straightforward. It was easy, although I did have issues connecting to a shared, the shared folder that I set up over SMB. I had heard that that was a problem for Mac and for Windows, but I had also heard that in the recent OS update, it had been resolved, at least for the Mac only, and I did not see that. I was still having problems after I updated the firmware. So hopefully you green will get that worked out. And I'm sure I'm going to encounter a couple more bugs as I continue to test. And again, it's, it's in its infancy. So 
um, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that at this point. Another thing I noticed by default, SSH is enabled, so I'm not sure why that is, but if you go for a device like this, you might want to go ahead and get that disabled for security purposes. At this point, let's go ahead now and take a look at the final rankings. All right, so here are my final numbers. Based on all of the things I talked about during the course of this video, let's take a look by category, starting with presentation. You can see I gave presentation a five, and that is totally worth it. The packaging was beautiful, not only on the outside, but all the care and effort they put on the inside with all of the packing material and all of the uh, two Ethernet cables and the heat sinks for the M.2 drives. They really thought it out well. So again, for that reason, I give presentation a five. Moving on to price, I give price a three, and I base that on the following. I think the 419 price as the Kickstarter price is a great deal for this unit. However, when it comes off Kickstarter and sells for the regular price of $699.99 discless, I think that is a little bit high uh, for this device as far as in comparison to the other well-known proven brands on the market. So I mentioned it in the video that I think Ugreen needs to revisit the regular retail price and I stick with that. So again, I give price a three. Moving on to hardware. Hardware, I have to give a five. If I could rate higher in each of the categories, I set the limits one to five, I would give it a higher rating than five. They just absolutely nailed it. The device is well built. It's solid. I think it stands up to any of the name brands that are out there on the market. So again, for hardware, you get five. Moving on to software. Software is an interesting category because I'm combining the setup of the device along with the user interface. Setup was super, super simple, really quick. The device is snappy. The setup wizard is really, I've seen a lot of setup wizards on various manufacturers, on various devices. This setup wizard was really well done and simple, and it'll walk even the most novice user through the entire setup, including uh, storage pool and volume. The UI was clean, it was snappy, it was easy to navigate, like I mentioned. However, it does, it is lacking still. Uh, I'd like to see it mature more. I'd like to see more apps available in the App Center. I did encounter some things like with the uh, not being able to connect to the SMB share, things like that. Um, and I'm sure, again, the, the software is in its infancy. I'm sure it's going to progress, and I sure hope it does. So for that reason, even though I do like the simplicity and the cleanliness look of the UI, it has some growth uh, ahead of it. So for that reason, I give it a 2.5. And, you know, my final thoughts, do I like this device? I, I do. I I'm very impressed with this device. I think it has a lot of potential, especially in the hardware area. So should you buy this device? As a first-time NAS user, I think I would. I, I think it's great, like I mentioned, for small businesses, photographers, and, and home users. Is it ready for the big time to compete against the likes of Synology and QNAP? Uh, from a hardware standpoint, I would definitely say absolutely. From a software standpoint, well, I guess that's just going to remain to be seen. If you'd like to see more content like this, please click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.